miraculously on time. Is that is that possible? <laughs> Very good. First in the seven years, right, Jeff? Yeah. So but it's it's that Mumbai pressure. So 9:30 will transmit Bin Mahler's. Is uh, Jeff is Bin Mahler's lecture gonna come from the end of unit to here? Okay. So uh, can the panel come up and answer some questions? Uh, uh, Joe, Chris, uh, Haru. So we have a little bit of time for questions. And at 9.30, Bin Mahler will talk about this EUS guided very advanced interventions, embolizations, uh, gastrojejunostomies, cholecystoduodenostomies, and the like with this very nice new lumen opposing stand. That will also go to uh, India at the same time. And then we'll immediately thereafter start the live cases with three poems and an EUS guided coil embolization of some large gastric viruses. But for now, we'll answer questions for the next, um, I'd say 15, we, uh, 10 minutes. So we have some microphones, or, or if you feel you have a loud voice, you can just ask directly. Have there really been no major mediastinal complications from poem? I mean, no abscesses, deaths, et cetera, worldwide. And, and secondly, why, why it appears that poem is better than a heller. Why should that be or is that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm unaware of... Uh, any serious mediastinal complications. We, we know <clears throat> historically from our work in the animal lag and the ongoing experience clinically in POEM that that tunnel is incredibly safe from the standpoint of contamination. The greatest risk in the procedure is if you inadvertently, the trend now is to move towards full thickness and that's what's getting the, you know, the superiority over the heller myotomy. So if a full thickness myotomy is done across the LES, you're going, to get, you're going to get as good, if not better, results than the heller versus less risk unless you injure the mucosa overlying that flap. If there is an injury to that flap, then you're running the risk of a fistula with a full thickness resection. But, you know, the data is the data. I mean, it's, uh, it's solid. Reflux afterwards is an issue. I can, <clears throat> I can tell you. The, so the Northwestern and North Shore, two groups where a surgeon is doing the poem, reported one leak each that required the patient to get the drain. One, uh, one patient stayed in the hostel weeks, and the other one maybe two months. Uh, again, it was Hangness and Yujiki. Uh, it's in their series. But they had the same. So both groups compared their first 20 hellers to their last 50, 60 hellers. And these are very experienced heller surgeons. And they also had one leak requiring taking the patient back to the R on the Heller group. So there are some contained, uh, well, self-limited complications. Well, I wouldn't call it self-limited. If you have to go to the R to get a drain and then it weakens the hose, So you get some leaks, at least on those series. Swanstrom, that has essentially as big a series as, as I, but split among three surgeons at their center, is uh, reported that submucosal tunnel bleed that had to go to the operating room, but no leaks and no mediastinitis. Um, Joe had some bleeds in the tunnel, uh, three of which, three of which required uh, Blakemore, right, to just tampon none. Yeah. Three, uh, the out of out of out of uh, you know what, seventeen hundred poems. Or, right? Three out of how many poems? Uh, one, one thousand eight hundred. So that's a pretty low. One thousand eight hundred cases. Three, three, three delayed bleeding, bleeding in the tunnel. That had to be controlled with tamponade with a Blakemore. Now, now, in my series, I have had no leaks. Nobody was ever taken to the OR afterwards. Nobody required any IR intervention. Um, no mediastinal infections, no tunnel bleeds. Uh, yeah, that's 190 something poems over five years. So if you have done your homework, you do it deliberately and you take the proper precautions, I think it's probably safer than a heller. 
There's also Swanstrom compared it, again, the, the fourth studies comparing poem to Heller. So Swanstrom compared his first 40 poems to his last 64 Hellers. Again, less complications in the poem group. All three surgical groups show that poem is faster, statistically significant, has statistically significant less blood loss, less pain, faster return to work. And as far as complications go, they were either similar in all groups, or I think in the Swanstrom group, maybe even slightly less, but not statistically significant. And um, yeah, so, it's, so the, and then the, in terms of efficacy, the, the results were better, were equal in the Huangness and Yujiki study, but they were better in the Swanstrom study. At one month, significantly less Eckhart score in the poem than the Heller, and at six months, less but not statistically significant score on the, on the Heller, on the, sorry, on the poem. But if you look at specifically what percent of patients had dysphagia at least once a week for solids, 0% on the poem, 29% on the Heller. So it really, Heller should just disappear. Yeah. Haru, I'm interested in, your, in, in the dissection along the greater curve that you do. So uh, where do you start, uh, like anterior, posterior, and do you spiral when you get down to the GE junction, or do you just go in a straight path? What, what, what's the technical uh, way to do yeah, that? Yeah, we, we can arrange anything. <laughs> 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 but, but, so generally, so we uh, so approach straight. Uh, create a tunnel straight is better. So often we approach to the greater curve of the stomach, so we approach, so starting the seven o'clock direction in the esophagus, and then go to straightly to his angle. Yeah. And, and go over the top. So, so you don't bother starting at five and then, then, then curving around. Like in sigmoid, do you sometimes have to curve around? <laughs> or you just? Yeah, yeah. So uh, for example, so the patient who receives the previous Hela myotomy, of course, a scar is located at the anterior wall. Anterior wall. So uh, even though we start the myotomy in a, a, after Hera failure, so we start the myotomy anterior wall, and then uh, when we facing to the uh, previous scar, we change the route to a left or right. So, uh, yeah, so. Ha Haru will have will demonstrate this live in just a few minutes because he has a. An 80-year-old patient with a failed Heller myotomy and five previous Botox injections. So we actually see how he does it in real life, right? You know, with a dilated esophagus that you can get, you get what's called tunnel wander. So you think you're starting out, you know, anterior, and then because of the dilation, it wanders a little bit, and you can't get off, off anterior wall, off posterior wall, and it tends towards the greater curve. So another advantage uh, when we compare the per poem procedure to uh, the uh, surgical myotomy, Hera, Hera doll, the, uh, so in, unfortunately, I, 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 I and me, me and uh, Dr. Zor, both of us are originally surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, Hera myotomy, we, in a Hera myotomy, we have to dissect the phrenoesophageal ligament. But in a poem procedure, we approach from inside the lumen, so it's not necessary to dissect the phrenoesophageal ligament. That is a major advantage of the poem procedure. And then we can extend the myotomy rings, particularly proximal, as, as long as we wish. But the uh, laparoscopic helar, so of course the maximum length of myotomy, or eight centimeter, 10 centimeter, that is, that is maximum. So I think the poem has more advantage than uh, surgical myotomy. So as for a poem, we can cut the muscle in any direction at any distance. So nowadays, I always put the patient on a supine position and always cut the posterior wall of the muscle in the esophagus in our unit. But did you always do that or you changed to that? Always do that in our okay. unit. Well, not exactly, because your first 140 were anterior, right? You published anterior versus posterior. So, yes, yes. So the question is, why did you change? 
Well, you can find uh, the knife uh, from the channel comes from six uh, or seven o'clock. If you cut the uh, posterior wall, you, what do you do? You just put the scope forward, push, push, push. And the, the procedure time could be very, very shortened. So the average procedure time of Palm Yawa unit is, all, is just 30 minutes. That's down from 32 with the anterior <laughs> approach. <laughs> yes. Um, getting back to the, uh, the full thickness procedure. So basically, the scope starts in the stomach, gets its way into the peritoneum, where you're able to remove the growth. How do you prevent infection and complications from what our nurses remember from what we used to call traditional perforation? Because that's kind of like what you're doing. So how do you avoid infection and you work with CO2? Like, how is it done? Well, as, as, as Chris mentioned, this is all notes-based research. And people have done notes and, and did cultures of, of the fluid from when you do laparoscopy, when you do notes. Uh, they tried prophylactic antibiotics, cleaning the stomach, gas sterilized scopes. There's been a lot of research that, that was before I moved to POEM. So it was in the traditional notes research. Maybe Chris knows of the results of all these studies on infection when you have a breach of the lumen. Yeah, so you're, you know, your, your fears are realistic, but what it, what's turned out with all the notes research that during the amount of time that's spent during that procedure, removing the um, uh, tumor, is very little, there is contamination in the peritoneal cavity, but it's so minimal because it's controlled. You know, you can control patient position, you can aspirate the lumen of the stomach, that the body tolerates that. It's, it deals with it without any sequelae, like post-op fever or abscess formation. So there is contamination, but it's fairly minimal. And um, you can give pre-op antibiotics if you want, and you can lavage the lumen if you want, but the animal data suggests that it's all unnecessary. You have to have an effective closure, and hence, you know, the suturing right now is the best guarantee. That is the gold standard. A quick yes or no. How many people lavage with antibiotics, and which antibiotics are you for? Lavage. I lavage. What? Esophagus or stomach or both? When you're doing well, a poem, you when I do a poem, I, I clean the esophagus with uh, one liter of uh, uh, water with gent. I don't lavage anything. No antibody. I thought the magic solution was gentamicin with a little bit of saline. No lab data suggests you don't have that. That's no that. longer. That that's not longer. Uh, the holy water. <laughs> we will use the saline, saline to, to clean the esophagus. I mean, you don't want to do it with food in the esophagus, obviously. Right. And uh, as long as you clear the lumen, I think. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, to be honest, I don't know whether it makes a big difference whether you just use saline to make sure that the esophagus is nice and glistening and clean, or whether the, adding the gentamicin, I mean, the whole concept that some it will be absorbed by the bacteria as you're washing is a little uncertain for me. So I just do it out of uh, habit almost. Yeah, there's no data on the lavage with antibiotics. You know, a volume lavage is, is uh, uh, you know, we, we've in our lab, we've looked at volume lavage versus antibiotics. And as long as you have sufficient volume and you've cleaned the surface, it's just as good, it seems. So what about, what about the tunnel? Now, for I, the I, well, see, Haru used to do the holy water, the little gentamicin. At, before you close the tunnel at the end, I do not put any antibiotic no. in the tunnel, no. Not not lastly, what about hemostatic foam powder, you know, that the surgeons can use on liver surfaces? Do you think there's any advantage to fill your tunnel with a hemostatic foam? I mean, there's four or five different ones. Anybody do it? No. We, uh, we looked at fibrin sealant as a volume tamponade in the tunnel. You know, when you're done, you stick the fibrin sealant in, and um, we didn't see any difference in outcome. Uh, I, yeah. think, I think their meticulous hemostasis 
is much more important than than. Uh, Till now, there is no case of the tunnel infection in our unit during the pump, but we have one case of the ritual peritoneal abscess, one case. And just behind the right kidney, one case. To the pump. Air and the liquids. Uh, track liquid, uh, track uh, yeah, down yes. into the, yeah. Along the um, um, ritual peritoneal, yeah. Posterior, so. I mean, don't get me wrong, the complication rate may increase as you get people entering with no ESD experience uh, in droves that only do small volumes per year. So it's, it's, uh, I'm really worried about that. It's not, I, I think it's, there's going to be some severe complications. Hi. Can I just ask for a group thought on the need for fundoplication after a poem? And because I, I, I know that I've come across different opinions. And has anybody who's, who's done a fundoplication afterward found that that caused dysphagia all over again? So, um, when we started doing POEM uh, and the thoracic surgeons got interested in it, we actually have done hybrid POEMs now. Uh, where we got, I go down, I do an intentional full thickness myotomy, the entire length of the uh, tunnel short four centimeters from the closure. And the thoracic surgeon then goes in with a small scope, takes a look at my, I do it anterior now, switch from posterior to anterior, and they can look at my uh, gastric portion of the myotomy and determine whether or not it's down far enough. Because that's probably the biggest mistake uh, that's made. People just don't go far enough down onto the stomach. And then the uh, surgeon takes the fundus and does a really simple modified door procedure. Uh, puts four stitches right on the anterior um, crust of the diaphragm. Just brings a fundus over, four stitches, and it's kind of an, a simple anti-reflux wrap. We've done that now in, in maybe a dozen patients. And um, they go home the same time as they would with the POEM procedure. It doesn't delay the hospitalization. We haven't seen dysphagia. And of course, they don't have any reflux whatsoever. Um, you know, and our follow-up now is probably two years in some of these patients. So it's not a very long follow-up. Having said that, the thoracic surgeons now are scratching their heads saying, you know, is it really worth it? Um, and so now we've swum back. So now we just do a full thickness resection, we close it, and we wait, watch, and see if the patient has reflux afterwards. So we've done it, uh, but we're not sure of its value. We have two more minutes. So. Any difference between full thickness myotomy at the end? Full thickness myotomy at the end versus no full thickness for GERD? We're not dealing with the... the uh, uh, free noesophageal ligament, so it should still be good. Right. Well, I think no about difference. in relation to reflux. No yeah. yeah. I, well, you know, you, you know, uh, no Pingong difference. looked at that, no. and there was no difference, right? No difference. No. no. Yeah, we actually had a uh, NOSCAR funded study and looked at circular myotomy versus full thickness in the animal uh, model, and there was no difference. No, no, uh, gastroparesis, vagal injury, no. I don't think we've, uh, no, we don't, don't venture see. that far out of the esophagus. I've no. seen the, we've seen the vagus on the last course we did. Yeah. Yeah. He has a picture of it, but you know, it's still far, even when you do full thickness, you see it, but it's too far out to actually cut it, I think, yeah? Oh, uh, Haru has pictures of it, yeah, of the vagus. Vegas, yeah, vagus has got a sheath on it and it's kind of wiggly, you know what I mean? It, it kind of slips out of the way. Oh, now, now we're going to do, there's Ken. So he's going to do his lecture, which is now, are, are, we, are we connected to Mumbai?